In this video, I want to go through some examples of using the quotient rule. Now, there are going to be a couple of cases here where I'm actually going to end up using the chain rule as well. And in the last question, I'm going to have the product rule as well. So I've got to have the uh, quotient rule, product rule, and chain rule all in one problem for question six. But let's start off with number one. Now, if we remember the uh, quotient rule formula, um, when we've got f of x over g of x, we want to differentiate by starting at the bottom of the, the g of x and uh, multiplying by the derivative of the top. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. OK, so that's the process that we're going to go through. So here in this first example is the f is the x plus 1 and the g is the x plus 2. So dy by dx is the bottom times by the derivative of the top, which is just 1. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1, all over the bottom squared, so x plus 2 squared. So our job now is to simplify this. So we have x plus 2, then take away x plus 1. So take away x, take away 1, um, multiplying through by that minus 1. And then we've got x plus 2 squared in the denominator. So the x's cancel from the numerator. I have 2 take away 1, which is 1. And so I just get left with 1 over x plus 2 squared. So that is the dy by dx, the first derivative of number 1. OK. So let's have a look at number 2. So number 2, we've got uh, y equals x over 3x plus 5. So we start off by getting the bottom and multiplying by the derivative of the top. Take away the top times by the derivative of the bottom, which is just 3, all over the bottom squared. So simplifying the numerator, I have 3x plus 5, take away 3x, all over 3x plus 5, all squared. The 3x's in the numerator will cancel, leaving me with 5 over 3x plus 5 squared. OK, so there is your first derivative for number 2. Right, let's have a look at number 3. So number 3, we have 2x squared minus 5 over x plus 3 squared. So starting with the bottom, we've got the x plus 3 squared times by the derivative of the top, which is 4x. Take away the top, put it in a bracket, times by the derivative of the bottom. Now we're going to differentiate that using the chain rule. So the 2 will come down to the front. The derivative of what's inside is 1, so that comes outside, so that's not going to change anything. And then I've got just the x plus 3 to the 1. So over the bottom squared, which would be x plus 3 to the 4. OK, so squared squared. Now, you don't want, at this stage, to start multiplying brackets out in the numerator unnecessarily. It can seem very tempting to want to do that, OK? But if I tidy things up first, you'll start to see as to why that might not be a good idea. So I'm going to have 4x lots of x plus 3 squared. So I'm not expanding the brackets here. Take away, well, I'm going to bring that 2 to the front. Lots of 2x squared minus 5, lots of x plus 3. Over x plus 3 to the 4. Now, when I'm looking at this, I can see that I've got x plus 3 as a common factor here, here, and here. Now, because x plus 3 is a common factor to all terms in the fraction, I can divide all the way through by that x plus 3, top and bottom. OK, and it won't change the fraction. So if I do that, the x plus 3 will go from here. This will become cubed. This will become to the power of 1. So I'd be left with 4x times x plus 3, take away 2 lots of 2x squared minus 5, all over x plus 3 cubed. Now, you see, you wouldn't have noticed to have done that 
if you had multiplied the brackets out. So now I want to simplify the numerator. So if I multiply through by that 4x, I get 4x squared plus 12x. Then take away 4x squared. Then plus 10. All over x plus 3 cubed. So now the 4x squareds will cancel. And I'll be left with 12x plus 10 over x plus 3 cubed. OK? So that is the final form that I want it to be in uh, as the first derivative of number 3. OK, right, so that's number 3 done. Right, let's have a look at number 4. y equals 2 over x plus 4 to the 6. Now, this question, you could use the chain rule and write it as 2 lots of x plus 4 to the minus 6. So if you did that, you could use the chain rule. Okay. Now, we're going to use the quotient rule. You should get to the same thing. So let's check. So if I use the chain rule, I'll have the minus 6 coming down to the front, multiplying with a 2, so minus 12. And then I would take 1 off the power. The derivative of what's inside is just 1, which comes outside, doesn't make any difference. So I could write that as minus 12 over x plus 4 to the 7. So that is the answer I should be arriving at. So let's see that we do. So I've got the bottom times the derivative of the top. Well, the derivative of 2 is just 0. So take away 2 lots of the derivative of the bottom. So 2 lots of 6 x plus 4 to the 5, all over the bottom squared, which is x plus 4 to the 12. So simplifying the numerator, not multiplying out the brackets, I will get minus 12 lots of x plus 4 to the 5 over x plus 4 to the 12. And now, because I have x plus 4 to the 5 as a common factor of numerator and denominator, I can divide through by x plus 4 to the 5. So I can do that. That will go to 7. So I'll have minus 12 over x plus 4 to the 7, which is the same as the one I would get using the chain rule. So you might see here that the chain rule, in certain circumstances, might be quicker. OK? But you can always fall back um, with the quotient rule, and you should get the same result. OK, right, so that's number four. Right, let's have a look at number five. Now, number five, we've got x plus four to the five over x plus five to the four. So, we start off with the bottom. Times the derivative of the top which will be 5 lots of x plus 4 to the 4. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom. All over the bottom squared, so x plus 5 to the 8. So just tidying this up, I've got 5 lots of x plus 5 to the 4, x plus 4 to the 4 take away 4 lots of x plus 5 cubed times x plus 4 to the 5. I've just changed the order uh, just so they're consistent. OK. So now I'm looking for a common factor. And there's the common factor of x plus 5 to the 3 in the top two terms and the bottom. So I can divide through by x plus 5 to the 3. So that will get me 5 lots of x plus 5 times x plus 4 to the 4 minus 4 x plus 4 to the 5 over um, the x plus 5 to the 5. So although x plus 4 uh, to the 4 is a factor of the two terms of the numerator, 
Uh, it's not a factor of the denominator, so I can't cancel through by that. But I could factorize that into the numerator, factorize it out of the numerator, rather. So I could bring the x plus 4 to the 4 outside of a big bracket that will include whatever's left, the 5 lots of x plus 5, and then take away the 4 lots of 1 lot of that x plus 4. Close the bracket, and then I'm going to have that over the x plus 5 to the 5. So I've got that x plus 4 to the 4. And now I can simplify this bracket. I've got 5x take away 4x, which is just x. And I've got 25, 5 lots of 5, 25, take away 4 lots of 4. So 25 take away 16 is 9. And so I now have it in its most simplified form. Okay, A nice factorised form as well, so that if you wanted to then find where... Uh, this curve uh, number five was stationary, for example, then I would be able to say, well, the stationary points are at minus four and at minus nine. Okay, so that's kind of the benefit that I can get from having it factorized into that form and looking nice. Okay, right, so let's move on to question six. Now, with number 6, starting with the bottom, we've got this 3x minus 5 to the 4. And I need to times that by the derivative of the top. Okay. Now, in order to differentiate the top, I've got to use the product rule. So I'm going to open a bracket. So I'm going to have the first times the derivative of the second. plus the second times the derivative of the first. OK, so that's my numerator. But I'm not quite done, because I've got to then take away the top times the derivative of the bottom. So times by the 4 comes down to the front, as does 3. 3x minus 5 cubed. That's going to be all over the 3x minus 5 to the 8. Whew. Right. So our job would now be to simplify this. Right. Hold on to your hats. OK. So let's see what we have. So I'm going to tidy it up first. So that I've got 3x minus 5 to the 4, open bracket, then I'm going to have 8x, x plus 2 cubed, plus 2 lots of x plus 2 to the 4. Close the bracket, take away this guy here. So 2 times 4 times 3 is 8, 16, 24. I've got the x as well. I've got an x plus 2 to the 4. And I've got the 3x minus 5 cubed all over the 3x minus 5 to the 8. OK, so next up, I have a common factor of 3x minus 5 cubed, because I've got it there, there, there. So I'm going to divide through by 3x minus 5 cubed. So that'll bring that down to a 5. Now bring that down to a 1. I'm also um, going to want to think about factoring this x plus 2 part out. So let's write the simplified version as it stands now before I go any further. 8x x plus 2 cubed plus 2 lots of x plus 2 to the 4. Take away 24x x plus 2 to the 4 all over 3x minus 5 to the 5. OK, right. So now I can see that I could pull out x plus 2 cubed from all of these three terms. Now, I haven't got this written in such a way, because I could factor that out first. Maybe that would be a little bit clearer. Let's do that first. I'm going to factor the x plus 2 cubed out so you can see exactly what's going on. 
So I'm going to have the 3x minus 5. I'm going to have x plus 2 cubed. Then I'm going to have 8x plus 2 lots of x plus 2. Take away 24x, x plus 2 to the 4. All over 3x minus 5 to the 5. OK. So, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to simplify that bracket. So I'd have 10x plus 4 in there. OK, so I'm going to rewrite that as 10x plus 4. Like so. Now, if I factor out the x plus 2 cubed from the numerator, I'll be left with 3x minus 5 um, times 10x plus 4. Take away 24x lots of x plus 2. Okay. Right, let's keep going. So I've got the x plus 2 cubed there. Now I'm going to want to multiply these brackets out now because there's not really much else I can do with them. And that will get me a quadratic. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to have is 3x times 10x, which is 30x squared. I'm going to be taking away a 24x squared there, leaving me with 6x squared. Now, from that point, I've got 3x times 4, so 12x. Take away 50x. So 12x take away 50x will leave me with minus uh, 38x. OK? So minus 38x. Um, take away another 48x. So 30, minus 38 take away 48 is um, minus 86, I think. So minus 86x. And I've also got the minus 5 times the force of minus 20. OK. Right. So at this point, that is really what I can, as far as I can really go, um, I could pull the 2, uh, common factor of 2, outside of that bracket if I wanted to. So 2 lots of x plus 2 cubed uh, times 3x squared minus 43x minus 10 over 3x minus 5 to the 5. So it's now in a format where if I wanted um, to find the stationary points of this curve, then I could say, well, it's where that bracket is zero, so where x is minus 2, and the two real roots that will come from that quadratic as well. Okay, So there will actually be three um, stationary points. Now, this is going to be, because it required quite a lot of manipulation, this is really an extension problem. It really shows whether you can do um, chain rule, product rule, and quotient rule, if you can do all three at the same time, where you know what you need to use when. That's really the key uh, to this level of differentiation, with those, learning those three rules knowing when each one is applicable and what you need to do at each, at each stage.